What is up everybody and welcome back to this extra hot and spicy top 10 Tuesday list and it's only hot and spicy because my AC broke and I just finished getting it fixed not too long ago and thank goodness because it was super hot inside of this room so I figured hey I'm gonna go over the hottest games that I've been playing over this last couple of months uh, this will probably be April and May so far and I'm gonna go over just the top 10 games I've played these months but with that said, let me know in the comment section what's the hottest game you've been playing and what games do you plan to play over the summer. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I'm trying to get to 20K. 20K is the goal. So please help me reach that goal. Every subscription counts. Every like counts. It helps this channel out so much. Best way you can support the channel. And if you want to go the extra mile, I just realized that I can actually make 99 cent memberships I've actually reduced the price actually I just added an extra tier so there is the snack level now because it's breakfast lunch and dinner but now we have the snack level and so for 99 cents you can support the channel and a lot of people subscribing at that level will really support the channel a lot better and I can you know pay to fix my AC a lot quicker um so please Become a member, man. Uh, those 99 cents will go a long way. And if multiple people do that, we'll be able to get this channel up and running to a, a much higher degree. So with all that said, let's get into this top 10 list. My number 10, honorable mention. Actually, let's do honorable mention. I played a game called Basket Boss, and that game was really fantastic. I was like, I wonder if they were trying to get an NBA theme on it, but couldn't get the NBA to sign off on it. NBA, you should really sign off. That was a really fun game. I got to play some Bonanza, Chicken, Dice, Veggies. These are all games that I was able to play. And I got to play Sheriff of Nottingham, but the Disney Robin Hood version. A lot of people ask, hey, what's the difference between the two? So if you've ever been wondering, there's like an extra little thing that they added in the game where you can take the cards that you've been saving up and you can donate them to villagers and they give you tokens that are worth the same amount as the as the cards that you traded in but they're just cards that you can't get rid of or something like that not that anybody's gonna steal anything from you so I don't know it's kind of weird I just kind of played without it but anyways that's it for my honorable mentions let's go with number 10 it's a game called unfair unfair is such an interesting game I got to play this this past weekend and I had a great time the the thing with unfair is that it is it's definitely a mean game so if you don't like mean games it there's a way that you can take it out and then I think there's a game called fun fair which is like they took all the meanness out of the game but I think the meanness kind of makes the game fun but you're basically building like a little carnival fair and you have rides and you modify the rides with themes and different things like that all the decks are modular so you can kind of just like mix and match them it's pretty interesting I had a good time playing it and uh, I think it's a game I would definitely play again you know it's somewhere in like the seven range I think it's good but yeah amazing game I had a great time playing that Next game on my list, my number nine is Colt Express. Colt Express is an older game, one spilled of yards, I think it's like 2015 or something like that. But it's basically like this little train that's full of loot and everybody is a bandit trying to get as much loot as they possibly can. But in order to do that, you have to play a card down onto a pile and then sometimes you play them face up, sometimes you play them face down. And so you're basically looking at what your opponents are playing and trying to play based off of where you see that they're moving. And one of the things that's interesting about it is that after the round is over and everybody's played all the cards out, you'll take the cards and you'll flip them. You turn the deck upside down and you flip them one at a time and everybody plays out their moves that way. And man, it's so interesting because sometimes you thought you were going to do something, but then something triggered something else that made a person go up this way. It's really, really fun. If you ever find a copy of Colt Express pretty cheap, you should pick it up. It's a very, very fun game. My number eight is Flamecraft, and I have the deluxe edition that I that I had purchased when it first came out because it just looks so good, and I love the deluxe version with the little miniatures and the wooden pieces. Flamecraft is just a great game. It's a, it is basically a contract fulfillment game where there's a bunch of little different contracts and then you have to gather the resources by going to different shops but it's a really cool mechanic where when you're going to shops you put dragons in those shops and you make them stronger so that the next time you visit or somebody else visit they will get more benefits from it and more resources it's like a super basic worker placement it's not even worker placement it's like worker movement because you just move it from shop to shop you can never visit the same shop twice and then you just keep fulfilling contracts until there's no more contracts left or until they run out of uh, dragons from the artisan deck and then once you do that, you count up who has the most points. And I really love Flamecraft. It's such a good game. Uh, next up, number seven is Ticket to Ride Europe, uh, the 15th anniversary edition. I've been playing this, and the more that I've been playing it, I finally got to play it with David. Fun fact, he had never played 
ticket to ride before and man we had an amazing time got to play with him and Giovanni um, some friends of mine that I was able to get the game played and it was really really good man like the more that I play this game the more that I'm like man ticket to ride is so good that's one of those games that I feel like a lot of people are like I don't like ticket to ride it's played out I think at the beginning of this channel you could probably find some clips of me saying that very statement of like man I don't like this game I'm so sick of ticket to ride I played it too much and that is true. I think I did say that at like at the very beginning, but then as I played it again, I'm like, man, these games are kind of timeless, man. And I just like, I've gotten out of that habit of saying that games are just bad and it's just kind of like, no, you know what? I just needed to give it a break and come back to it. Same thing with like Pandemic and Catan. But Ticket to Ride's great. You just collect train car cards and play them out to make paths and you're trying to get uh, different contracts to fulfill to build paths with your train cars and whoever gets the most points wins. It's super fun, super easy, very light and fun game. Great gateway game, I think, for a lot of people. So I think it's a ride. Uh, my number six is Last Light by Roy Kennedy. Let me tell you something, man. I got to be completely honest with you when it comes to this. When I first saw Last Light, I was definitely not interested in it. And I don't mean that as a slight against anybody. I'm just being honest. And so like at first I was not interested in this game. And I'm saying at first because I, I want to give hope. I don't want people to think that I'm being negative. But Last Light, like at first I was kind of like, I just, I don't know. I don't know about the production value of the game. It doesn't look that great. And I got a chance to play it because my friend David bought it. He was very interested in the game. He found it when he was at a board game store. So he picked it up, he bought it, he played it. He played it with me and he's like, yo, come over to the house and play this game and we played it. And man, let me tell you something. That's a good game, man. Like the mechanics of the game are very interesting. I did have a rough time playing it the first time. I think I found a, like a lot of things to, that I was kind of doing. Like saying, like I was like, man, I didn't enjoy my first playthrough of it, but I think I like, again, it's like user error. I think everybody else had a great time but me, but again, I lost and I think that's why. And I didn't build resources like I should have. And so I went straight for like the light, like there was these places that produce light on and I was going straight for those things, but everybody else was bolstering their little army of ships and they were moving across the map. The one thing that I love, I think the best mechanism in this game is that rotating board. Oh my goodness, I did not realize how devastating that was gonna be to my strategy until they were like, all right, so now that, that we're finished with this round, this is gonna rotate and this is gonna rotate. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm literally in somebody else's territory. All I have is like one ship out there. Yeah, man, I was like, yo, that mechanic was actually really cool. Last Light is a fantastic game, it really is. My first play of it didn't go over well, but I know that a lot of that was just on me, so I need to play it again. But I've only played it once, so my first impression was kind of a mixed review. Some people like it, some people don't. Some people say there's production issues with the game, but to, to be honest with you, I didn't see any of that, but I've only played it once, so who knows? Maybe if I play it like a million times, we'll see some of those things. But playing it was really good, and man, when he says that it only takes like an hour, it only took us like an hour to play that game. It is fantastic, and the game doesn't overstay its welcome. Great game, just need to play it more. So, Roy Kennedy, good job, man. I think the production on this game was fantastic. I eat my words about not being interested in it. Very, very good game. Uh, next up, number five, Heat Pedal to the Metal, man. I've been playing that a lot lately and it's just been really good. Like, I've enjoyed playing Heat so much that I just keep pulling the, the game out almost every single time people come over. It's awesome. Man, I don't really need to say too much about it. Days of Wonders knocked it out of the park. It's an amazing racing game that has a little bit of like deck building kind of, but not really. It's super interesting with all the heat cards. It's like you, yeah, it's it's fun. You definitely got to play heat pedal to the metal. You got to at least try it at least once. Uh, number four, this is a new game that I, well, it's not a new game, but it was a new to me game. It's been in my collection forever. I let David borrow it and David learned how to play it and we played it all together, a four player game of In the Hall of the Mountain King. That's a cool game, man. So it's like a polyomino game where you're like underground and you're building like these paths and the deeper you go towards like the crust of the earth which is like in the middle there's like a magma chamber and you're digging and there's like different colored areas and the deeper you go into the caverns the more points you score when you put these little altars and these little pedestals up it's a cool game man and you score points for building paths but if you build paths with rarer materials you get even more points man it's there's a lot to this game i'll tell you what this is not an easy game to play i think the i think the the 
BGG like a complexity rating is definitely not correct. This thing was like at a 2.8, I think. And I'm like, man, there's a lot in this game for it to be a 2.8. I don't think it's a super hard game to play, so maybe that's the reason why. But man, there's so much to the game. I think the I think it's more at like a three point, like probably like a three, maybe like a not not a three point five. I think it's too high. But it's really fun. You just build little paths and stuff like that, and move these little altars around. The coolest mechanic in this game is the the resource management, where you put these cards down and they give you resources. And then when um you have four to start with at the base, and then you put three on three cards on top of that to make like a pyramid. And every time you complete a pyramid like of three cards, that thing cascades and you get not only the resource of the card you just played, but the two resources under it that form the base of that little pyramid. And then if you place one above that, you get that resource plus this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and then you end up getting like six resources worth. And it's really, really fun, man. Like that, it was such a cool game and that mechanic alone with the cascading resource production is super, super cool. But then that's also the end game. And then they had this like genius thing where if like the level one because there's like level one level two and level three different like trolls they're harder to like earn but at some point when the level one trolls roll out run out sorry you can take the level two trolls and start putting them out and then incentivizes you to want to get them because they give more resources so it's like oh level two trolls are on the bottom now and i could take those and i can start slotting them i was like dude that's genius because not only does it incentivize people to get more of these like level higher level trolls but because you're getting them for free but it also pushes the end game because the more when you have 10 trolls and two people have 10 trolls the end game happens and so i was like oh man that's cool i love that mechanic there's so much to this game that i really love that's why it's my number four on this list number three another new game to me that i had never played before tribes of the wind Dude, this game is great, man, and the and the Vincent Dutre artwork. Vincent Dutre is literally like my favorite artist of all uh, the board game artists. But yeah, Tribes of the Wind is phenomenal. Like it's, the, I can't even really describe what what it is. It reminds me of like Hanabi, but competitive Hanabi, where Hanabi is more of like a like. So basically, the way that it works is like you have cards but you can't, on the front of them, it has like stuff, but the backs of them show up to your opponents and the cards you can play from your hand are based off of what your opponents have in their hands. And so it'll be like, whoever has, have the most water cards. And if you do, you can do this effect. And so you have to look at your opponents and see if you have more water cards. If you don't, you can't play the card. So it's really interesting. And then you get these little wind riders and you're trying to clear all the pollution off your board and build all of your cities. Whoever does that first ends up ending the game. And then whoever has the most points wins. It's super cool, man. You really got to give this game a try. Tribes of the Wind is super good. That's why it's my number three. My number two is Jerusalem Anno Domini. So Jerusalem, I've been wanting to play this game for a while. Like I said, I am a Christian. So like a game about Jesus, I'll take it. And you know, there are people that are just like, oh, this is nonsense. Like I would never play this because they're, they're, you're making a game out of something that's meant to be serious and sacred and it's like no like i don't i just don't agree with that take i think that's a weird take because i'm just like bro there's so much worse stuff you could be playing it's you know what i mean it's like these same people that are talking about jerusalem or playing other games or you're killing each other or doing weird stuff so it's like i like that i have a game about jesus you know what i mean i thought it was really cool this is a fun worker placement man like i genuinely like jerusalem i was playing with a couple of people we played a three-player game of it the one thing that i don't like about jerusalem is there's a solo mode then there's a two-player mode which is very different than the three-player mode but then there's a three-player mode which is different than the four-player mode like there are instructions for every single player count even though three and four are very similar it's still like there's still some extra setup and things you have to do when you play with two you play with completely different decks and there's extra mechanics when you play solitaire it's a completely different game so it's like it's tough my recommendation try to play it at four people just try to play it at four if you can and then learn how to play the two player and the one player the solo game just because it, it's complicated man it is a very complicated game it's not complex like it's not hard to play but it is complicated in the sense that it's like, there's just so much going on and so many rules and so many symbols and iconographies. And, and they give you a player aid, but the player aid doesn't really say what they do. It just kind of goes, oh yeah, this is the last supper, go to the last supper action. 
which tells you to go to the Last Supper, but then you have to remember that in order to go to the Last Supper, you have to take one of your workers from like one of the fields to bring them in. So it, but I loved it. I, it was great. Like Israel, Jerusalem, Israel, Jerusalem is such a good game and I loved playing it and it's got a lot going on, but it's very, very fun. And so if you're looking for a good game, that's a great one. That was my number two. And my number one is a game that I have been playing and I uh, want to give a quick shout out to Ivy Studios because they sent me an entire care package with all the games that they've created, including all the expansions and stuff like that, it's fantastic. So I got my hands on Moonrakers, Veiled Fate, Mythic Mischief, and also Fractured Sky. But they went above and beyond because not only did I get a copy of Fractured Sky, but they sent me the super deluxe version with the painted minis. Like, I was like, dang, man, like, Ivy Studios, you guys are awesome, bro. Like, uh, you didn't even have to do that. I was just expecting retail versions, and they went above and beyond. And so I got to give them a shout out, man. So they, this game is number one on this list. And so take this with a grain of salt because you might be like, oh, well, they gave you a free game, and that's the reason why. No, but Fractured Sky, I got to play. I haven't played the others yet, but Fractured Sky is so stinking good man i've been having so much fun playing this and the strategies that i've been coming up with and starting the game off and you know it's like everybody's like oh yeah that like on that first round it's kind of like everybody's like oh there's one star fall and there's another star fall here and everybody's going after the secret information because they really want that star fall and for me i'm just like i'm gonna go win a whole bunch of random areas just so i can load myself up with resources so on the next round i can afford to just do as much as i want and there's like this cool little mechanic to it where it's like you're bluffing about because it's like area control and you have these ships with these little magnets if you get the deluxe version you get ships with magnets and then those magnets have combat power and whoever has the most combat power wins the starfall in that region but there's always one star that everybody knows about a public starfall and then there's one starfall because the starfalls are how you get points then there's one starfall that's secret but you can pay two gold to kind of like peek at it and it's kind of interesting because when you have a lot of resources and you can do a lot on your turn the the crazy part is that you can kind of just sit back and not put any of your airships out and watch what everybody else is doing and watch where everybody else is going and then just try to cut people off towards the end of your turn so it's such an interesting game man like i really love the bluffing i love the the 10 in the one chip how there's two chips that have all of the chips have like colored like borders but then there are two chips that are white and they stick out like a sore thumb and when you put that white one out they're like jeremy really wants to get that that starfall there or maybe he's bluffing. No, but why would he bluff if there's a stall for starfall there? And it's really fun because that, that chip can either be a 10 or a 1. And it, it's super, super fun, man. I've, I I really love Fractures. I can't wait to play it again. Like, I, Ivy Studios, like, one thing I can say about their games, the quality of their work is ridiculous. Like, leaps and bounds above all of their games. And I've opened up all of the games they sent me. And I'm like, the production value on all of them is fantastic. I think the one that was the least impressive was probably Veiled Fate. I thought Veiled Fate was nice. But at the same time, I just have to like kind of like the retail version of it. That's a very expensive game. And there's not a lot that comes in the box. But then again, I haven't really actually played that one yet. So the gaming experience for it might actually be really, really good. Maybe it is worth the $90. But yeah, the, the box was pretty empty. And I was like, kind of like, this is a really expensive game for what's in it. But this game, Fractured Sky, I know this game is like $180 for like the super deluxe with the painted minis. But bro, it, it's so beautiful. Like the people that I've played this with, all they do is go, they grab those things and they're just like, like even the holographic cards they have like like these cards that are like a hard plastic or metal they're like aluminum and then like they have like a hologram on them so whenever you hold them like this they kind of like it has like a picture of the island and the island kind of like moves back and forth bro, i was like ridiculous way overproduced but not in a bad way in a very very good way because like i saw the retail version of this and i was like man it's playable but I really like that super deluxe version, man. The deluxe version, I think, would be even nice, too, if you wanted to paint the minis yourself and save a little bit of money. But that super deluxe version is something something special, man. The, the player trays, 
it's so easy to teach. I think I can teach this game in maybe like five minutes or less. It's so fun, so easy. The more you play it, the better you get at it. The bluffing, everything, the area control. This game's great. That's why it's my number one, man. Like I just, I love Fractured Sky. And just, this is gut check. So like, this is a gut check. So take this for what it is. Right now, I'm sitting at like an 8.5 on that game out of 10. I want to play it a couple more times though, because like I said, I've only played it, I think twice. So this is just like first impressions. But after two plays of it, it's a game I will definitely play a game. Again, it's a game I will definitely pull out a lot because I think people would enjoy the table presence of this game. I'm like, bro, I could definitely see this game going up to nine. It's already a golden lunchbox game, but man, I could definitely see this game going up to a nine. For sure I just got to get some more plays of it who knows it might go back down to an eight I don't know but for right now I don't see it getting anything less than that I think on BGG it's like a 7.7 .7. I'm not exactly sure why that is because it's really good maybe it gets repetitive after a while and it, there's like a strategy that's just the surefire way to win those are also always possibilities but anyways Fractured Sky phenomenal Ivy Studios shout out to you guys Ivy Studios, you guys did amazing production on this game. Very fun, very fun. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe in the comment section. Just let me know what is the hottest games you've been playing over this summer time that we're going through. And don't forget, support the channel, all right? We want to get to 20,000 subs. Help us get there by pressing that subscribe button. Uh, liking the video is super helpful to get on the algorithm. And last but not least, if you want to support the channel even further, our memberships are as low as 99 cents now. So a dollar a month, man. So for $12 a year, you could support the channel. And it's it's I would love to have that support. It'll help the channel go a long way from where it is right now. So anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. See you guys later. Peace out. Now, I came out a little dissatisfied, but I think that was, again, it's user error. It was one of those things where like afterwards, I was just kind of like, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Golly. You good? Okay. Dog was sneezing like crazy. All right, anyway.